Our Father in heaven, we are grateful to be gathered this morning to remember a, a life well lived. We're grateful for the safe travels that have brought us together. We're grateful to remember Vera and her, her love and service and the anchor she was to her family. <clears throat> we pray for a portion of thy spirit with us as we remember her and uh, share memories. We pray that thou wilt bless us each with love for each other and to hold in our hearts the love that she had for all of us. And these things we say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And my mom did pick the songs for her own for her own service. And um, anyway, for those who are on, uh, listening and watching on Facebook Live, we're going to view a tribute video that uh, we've been looping throughout the the uh, viewing, so that you all can see it too, and we get to see it again. This was um, put together by uh, my cousin Robert Starling. So we've just been blessed, that's all. And I am ready to go alone. Change. Next week would be fine. <laughs> Hey. 
find out and what's what and what's important and so you try to hang in there and not let people influence you you know because people do try to influence you at times I've never had anybody to you know try to influence me I guess it was the, it was very obvious that they weren't going to influence me because <laughs> like I told that person that day if the prophet says it that's what you do there's no you can call it buying faith anything you want to but if you've got a testimony, then what the prophet says, that's that's it. And I still feel that way. Each of the children of of, uh, Don and Vera are going to take a few minutes to share some remembrances, and we'll start with, with Melody. Hello. You know, we were so fortunate to have Mom with us as long as we did. She lived to 92, and that's a good age. 
But recently I got a sympathy card and the front of it had this saying on it and I thought nothing is more true. It said, no time on earth is long enough to share with those we love or to prepare our hearts for goodbye. And in the last couple of weeks I've been flooded with memories, especially from my childhood, things I hadn't thought of for a long time. And I was trying to think about what I wanted to share with you here today and I realized actually I had some things I wanted to say to mom. So I wrote her a letter, and I would like to read that letter to you now, if I could. Dear Mom, It's been a few weeks since I was able to chat with you on the phone, and I'm feeling your absence keenly. I know you have been so lucky, I have been <laughs> so lucky to have a mother who was always there for me and who gave unconditional love and support. You were an extraordinary woman and all a child could ask of in a mother. In the past weeks, I've been thinking about all the gifts that you have given me in my life. When I was a child, you gave me security and safety, as well as love, toys, and piano lessons. But you also presented me with an excellent example to follow of how to live a life. You were a woman of faith, hope, and love. Mom, you were such a generous person. You loved people. You had a soft heart for anyone who needed help, and you always jumped in to do whatever task you saw that needed doing. There was always some way you were serving others. You even baked brownies and took them to the staff of the pharmacy at Costco when you filled your prescriptions. There are so many, in fact, there are probably hundreds of people that adore you. About 10 years ago, you and mom told us that you didn't want us to buy you anything for Christmas each year. You said you really had all you needed. And you requested that instead of buying you something, we give whatever we would have spent to charity to help others. And you only asked that we write to you about the recipients of our donation. Well, it turns out that this generous request actually gave me a perpetual Christmas gift because this became a favorite part of my holiday preparations each year. I got so much gratification in looking for a charity that I knew you would like and approve. And this simple, unselfish request from you became a very real way for me to honor the reason for the season in my heart. Another gift that I especially appreciate is a curiosity and a thirst for knowledge about the world. Wherever we were, you would arrange for us to visit local sites of interest, especially historical ones. You didn't keep us at home, but took us places and introduced us to so much. I recall crossing the country with you when I was very young, and I think it was at least twice by car and once by train, and so was privileged to get a good look at this extraordinary country of ours. And I can now boast that I've set foot in every state of the Union except for three. So I've still got Michigan, Vermont, and New Hampshire on my list, but I'll get there. I know my love of travel is a gift from you and your keen interest in all the world has to offer. Another gift? You taught us to hate waste. You were a conscientious steward of everything you had. You were a master shopper for bargains and a pro coupon, cli coupon clipper. I can't say that very well. You diligently recycled. And so I may not have grown up to be as effective a shopper as you were, but I do look for and appreciate a bargain. And my family will tell you that I've become the recycling sheriff of the house. Thank you for teaching me the principle of not wasting what we are given. And you didn't waste time either. I remember when we would sleep in as kids, and I'm talking about 9 a.m. or so, and you would declare that the day is half over. You really enjoyed your stories on TV, but I can still see you in my child's mind at the ironing board getting something accomplished while watching for pleasure. There was no just sitting. Well, I don't watch the soaps, <laughs> but I do listen to audiobooks while doing housework and driving, and I guess I learned that from you. You also gave us the gift of just having fun. I hadn't thought of this in years, but when you did your visiting teaching in Elizabethtown, do you remember that there was one rural road with a spot where it took a deep dip? And each time we went that way, David and I would beg you to go fast so that we'd catch air. And you'd do it. You'd do it. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you got the thrill we did or if you just love to hear our squeals and laughter. But I can say, I cannot count the times you said to me, you are having fun, aren't you? And you believed in thoroughly enjoying the good moments in life. And thank you, Mom, for one last delicious gift. Your kids and grandkids all love and crave your pumpkin bread. But I also remember as a young kid, your specialty was banana pudding and you made the best. My family also lists your corn pudding and chicken and rice as favorites, and banana bread and socket to me cake are special treats in our house, too. I treasure every single recipe you pass along to me. Mom, it was hard to see your suffering over the past couple of months. 
actually but just about a month, I guess. But I smile when I think of you finally being at rest and visualize your happy reunion with Dad. I can see all the joyous greetings and hugs shared with your dear friends Francis, Betty, Colleen, and other friends who went before you. I know you're smiling now and having a grand old time, to use your expression. I miss our conversations. I miss you. I will hold you in my heart forever. Thank you for everything, Mom. I love you, Melody. Thanks, Melody. Now you made me cry. It's spiritual allergies. <clears throat> somebody once talking with somebody, we were, what's your mom like? Said the only thing I could think of is that she was a force of nature. You couldn't stop her. Better would a man put forth his puny arm and try to move the Missouri River out of its course than to stop her from doing what she wanted to do. She could talk to the neighbors. She would help. She wrote the director of the FBI and changed his mind about an agent who was to be fired. Because she told him to think about the family and that he was only doing what he was ordered to do. And he wrote her back and said, I appreciate your insight. And they did not do it. But she was a loving, kind, a kind um, always serving, always giving. She taught me patience and forgiveness. A certain incident with syrup, the eye syrup, comes to mind. She had driven all the way to Louisville from Elizabethtown to get syrup that she used in punch for church outings. She had two grape and two orange. They were like gold in that house. So she asked me to carry it downstairs. She said, take two at a time. I said, no, I, I can get them both. You know, I'm a guy. I can do that. She said, take two at a time. And I didn't. I took the whole box. And as I started down the steps, it started going faster and faster and faster until I set them down on the floor hard and broke the bottom out of all four bottles. So as grape and orange spread across the basement floor, she looked at me and said, get out of the house for a while. <laughs> So I left. But she never came back with things like that to punish or berate. Most importantly, she taught me that prayer works, and that they're answered, and that blessings work. She was often sometimes sick, couldn't get up. She'd have a blessing, and the next day she's up doing what she had to do for that. She taught me the love of the gospel. And teaching, and I guess that's why I like to teach so much in the scriptures. She was always there at events for all of us. And I remember the travels. And again, you know, traveling, I went from Kentucky down to Georgia. She had made a cake. <laughs> and I was climbing up from the back, you know, that old yellow station wagon with the fake wood paneling. And... Uh, I was climbing over there, and she hit a curve, and I sat on half the cake. <laughs> Rather than getting mad, she just said, okay, you're eating that half, <laughs> which was good for me because I wanted the whole half of the cake, you know. I just <laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, all of those things. She also knew that some things are more important, like the day it snowed 15 inches in Las Vegas, and they got the road open to the Lee Canyon Ski Resort. And she let me skip school. <laughs> we were the number three car behind the snowplow going up the hill and spent all day up there. You know, she knew when it was time for that. But, I, you know, when I think of mom, a scripture comes to mind. I share with you. It's in Proverbs 31, verse 10 to the end. And it says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. 
She seeketh wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships, she bringeth her food from afar. She ariseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth the vineyard. She girded her loins with strength, and strengthened her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold off the distaff. She stretches out her hand to the poor, yea, and she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry, her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates, when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen, and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and careth not, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up, and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give, of, give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Mom liked sayings. She put, always put them on her uh, refrigerator. And, that. and the one that always stuck out with me is, I am not called to serve in this place. I am called to serve in the place of the Savior. And so she did. Thanks, Mom. Thank you, Melody and David. My earliest memory of mom was when I was around three years old. Dad was taking me on an airplane for the first time to visit Grandmother Smith in Florida. I was excited for the adventure until I saw my mom waving goodbye to us on the tarmac while holding my baby sister Bonnie. Only then did I realize that I was leaving the security of my mother's presence. I don't remember the big fuss I made on the airplane, though that ordeal was one of the stories that Dad repeated about my childhood, <laughs> along with the parental lesson he learned about separating a child from its mother too soon. <sighs> well, I was blessed with the security of Mom's presence for nearly 63 years, and I miss her profoundly now. Like most mothers, ours was the anchor of our family and of our upbringing in the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. During the years that dad didn't regularly attend church, mom made sure that we did. And as a member of the Relief Society, she didn't just attend meetings, she reported for duty. While we were cleaning out mom's house in Phoenix, the wife of a former ward bishop came by. She related what her husband once said about Vera Smith basically running the ward, in a good way, <laughs> whether she was in a leadership position or not. In other words, when the bishop or the Relief Society president learned about a need, mom had often already paid the person a visit and given support. She was an extrovert in the truest sense. She was energized by people. I witnessed this even during her final weeks. She received strength from visits, phone calls, and cards from her family and friends. And she even made new friends with her hospice chaplain and social worker. She had many close friends, and she kept in touch with them over the years. And she had me help, send, help her send birthday cards to children and grandchildren during her last month of life. Mom's caring nature was constant, a north star that guided and protected me throughout my life. There was nothing I couldn't confide in her, and not many things that I didn't. 
she always thought that I was better than I am. And so disappointing her was usually the only rebuke that I needed to repent. I can't think of a time when I took her counsel that I regretted it. On the other hand, I remember several painful times when I wish I had listened to her. In these and many other ways, Mom exemplified what President Joseph F. Smith once said about mothers. The love of a true mother comes nearer to being like the love of God than any other kind of love. I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thanks, Melody, Dave, and Sue. You made me cry. Sometimes it's not good to be last. I don't know if I can see my notes. Um, so I'm Bonnie. I'm their baby, the youngest child. And my siblings might disagree with me, but I never felt that Mom really treated me like the baby, mostly in the sense that there wasn't anything that she thought I couldn't do or I wasn't able to keep up with my older siblings. She cheered me on in any endeavor that I decided to participate. Now I know everybody thinks that they have the best mom in the world, but they're mistaken because the four of us had the best mom in the world. She was the most selfless person that I know. I remember many, many years ago she said that about her own dear mother. So it seems like the apple didn't fall too far from the tree. There's so many things that make my mother special to me. A lot of the things that my siblings have already said are true for me as well. She was always there for me no matter what I wanted to do. I feel so lucky for all the times that we were able to spend together and all the things that we were able to do together and for the confidants that we became. My mind is filled with wonderful memories of my mother and it was kind of hard for me to decide on just to share a few things with you today. But I've chosen three things. I had wanted a trampoline for many years. And I can remember the day that my mom and I drove all the way to Maryland. Now we were in Virginia at the time. So it wasn't really that far. But the traffic was heavy, of course, in the Washington, D.C. area. But I can tell, I could tell that my mother was very excited for me and she didn't complain about the white knuckle dri driving that she was having to do. I had also, another story, I had saved my money from my first real job at the Department of Commerce and I had planned to buy a brand new car. So for moral support, I asked my mother to go with me. So we went to the first dealership and I found the car. It was a little Datsun 310. It was brown, it was perfect, and I wanted that car. So we go in, sit down at the salesman desk, and the no negotiations begin. So I'm talking, you know, with the guy. My mom is sitting completely silent. I'm 20 years old. I'm not very old <laughs> to do this. And the gentleman, the salesman, finally says, Ladies, now you know that I cannot sell you this car for this price. And I said to him, well, I'm going to buy a car to, new car today, and I'm going to pay this price. So you can either sell it to me, or I can go down the road to one of your competitors. So he got up, went to his boss, and I looked at my mom, and I kind of scolded her. I'm like, Mom, why aren't you helping me? You know? And she said, you're fine. You're doing just fine. I don't, I don't need to, to help you with this. So you guys all know the outcome. <laughs> I got my car for the amount that I wanted to pay, so I guess this apple didn't fall too far from the tree. <laughs> so the last memory I want to share is our island hopping trip that we took while we were stationed on the island of Oahu in Hawaii. Mom and Dad had come for a visit, but my dad left after a week. He wasn't interested in seeing or traveling to the island, other islands. So my mom took me as her companion. So we went and had a wonderful time. We visited Maui, Kauai, Molokai, and the Big Island. I didn't go to mom to Lanai, but she went just for an hour or two, just so she could say she had been there too. So other than spending 
that week long trip with my mother, the highlight of our trip was on the Big Island. We decided to take a helicopter ride over the active vein volcano of Kilauea. As we flew over the helicopter over the volcano, you could feel the heat from the lava that was flowing. And I we both kind of prayed, "Oh, I hope this helicopter doesn't go down because we weren't going to survive that for sure." So to this day, that is one of the most amazing things that I have ever done. And I'm so blessed that I can share that memory with my mother. My mother had a very strong testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And she was well read in the scriptures, the Bible, and the Book of Mormon. She really enjoyed attending the gospel doctrine class. But what she really enjoyed and what was her passion was teaching that class. My mother served in the Washington DC the Washington DC temple for many years and she loved to attend the temple as often as she could. So it's fitting that my last visit with my mother culminated with attending the temple with her. The spirit was so strong that day and she looked like an angel. I will treasure that memory forever. The example of how she lived her life had such a great influence on me. Family was important to mom, and she has left a great legacy with four children, 19 grandchildren, and to date, 18 great-grandchildren. I am so grateful to my Heavenly Father that we had so many years with my mom, and I'm so grateful that he allowed me to be her baby daughter. There's a country song by Patty Loveless. It's called, How Can I Help You to Say Goodbye? The third verse and chorus read, Sitting with Mama, alone in her bedroom, she opened her eyes and then squeezed my hand. She said, I have to go now. My time here is over. And with her final words, she tried to make me understand. Mama whispered softly, Time will ease your pain. Life's about changing. Nothing ever stays the same. And she said, how can I help you to say goodbye? It's okay to hurt, and it's okay to cry. Come let me hold you, and I will try. How can I help you to say goodbye? Goodbye, Mama, until we meet again. I love you. Now I want to invite um, the spouse, our spouses, to take a, a few minutes if you'd like. No one, no one has to come up, but we certainly want anyone who wants to come and share remembrance about mom. We'll just kind of do this in a little bit of a, a, an orderly way. So I'll just um, uh, leave that to our spouses who would like to come up. And I have a little note here that says, please state your name and how you are related to or how you know grandma, mom, Vera, Aunt Vera. Because we have also have an audio recording going on and just so that we can know who's, who's who. Right. Any order. <coughs> this is a little, <coughs> a little unexpected. Um, you know, I'm 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 Dave Haight. I'm uh, Bonnie's uh, Bonnie's husband, and uh, I'm kind of the tough guy here. But this is <laughs> this is uh, you know what what a wonderful tribute from four children um, to the, to their wonderful mother. I won't speak long, but there's about about three things I wanted to say that I remember that uh, were important to me. You have to know I've known. I'm not a biological uh, child of hers, but I, I've known her since I was 13 or 14 years old. So I've known Mom a long time. Um, in our married life, she used to tell me so many times I can't remember how, and I always appreciate it. She says, you're, <laughs> she'd usually hug me on my way out or going, she says, you're, you're not a son-in-law, you're, you're just my son. And that meant a lot to me. Um, Yeah, I did not expect this to be <laughs> as difficult as it uh, as it is. Um, I will also say that uh, I was always very very grateful for her, 
her pumpkin bread and banana bread too. I think that's kind of iconic, I, iconic with her. Um, but another thing that you might not know is uh, before you know perpetuation of, of email, um, her handwritten letters and birthday cards have found me in the worst places in the world. And it was always a uh, relief and just a little bit of a highlight to come back from a, maybe an extremely dangerous patrol and there would be a letter on my bunk from uh, my mother-in-law. Nothing could keep me from just tearing that open. I wanted to to, uh, to read that. The last thing I'll, I'll say is uh, I attended a military school that's very difficult back in my 20s. Ranger school, and there's three phases of it. There's a mountain phase, and a desert phase, and a swamp phase, which is in Florida. And all three of them are miserable and difficult and have the different challenges. And I had finished the mountain phase physically exhausted and not real. Not, there's no way I can do two more phases of this. But I have to. Professionally, I have to. And it's something I know, it's, you know I need to do. And I don't remember exactly. Bonnie, I'm sure, will correct me. But I... <laughs> I, I think I had called Bonnie, and, but her mom was in on the on the phone too. And she could hear my self doubt, and uh, this wasn't easy. I said I, I just don't know if I can do this, and she told me lovingly, but pretty pretty direct, <laughs> pretty stern, and I've never forgotten it. I've used that in a, that lesson learned in many other aspects of difficult times in my life. She says, well, nothing ever, nothing worth gaining or achieving is ever easy to do. And uh, <laughs> it's like, I think I just got scolded, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, uh, and that was it. But uh, as my life went on, um, when things were, seemed some challenges, Things that just seemed that I, I cannot do this. There's just no way I can be successful in this. And I would literally hear her voice. Those things that are hard to achieve are not going to be easy. So I, I thank her for that counsel. And uh, I miss you too, Mom. Hi, my name is Carol Smith, and I am da Vera's only daughter-in-law. <laughs> so I have that wonderful distinction. The one thing that I loved about Mom was she never treated me like a daughter-in-law. She just was like, okay. But part of our story is Dave and I met when he came home off his mission in Mother's Day, and we were married in December. So this was not a slow process. And everybody in the ward knew we were going to get married about two weeks after we started dating. But she never, it was just OK, <laughs> and set the example. And I loved that she was working at the temple when we got married. So we got the really good ceiling room and really good sealer. And she just had everything all taken care of for us so that it was a, a special day. And we didn't have to worry about anything. And that was mom. Boy, it was organized to, to the teeth. But she always she set the example for me on how to be a good mother-in-law because I have four sons, and so I have, right now I have two daughters-in-law, and hopefully I treat them the way that she taught me to treat my family. And my daughters-in-law tell me all the time that, yeah, they, they love me, and because I butt out, I don't, <laughs> I don't manipulate, I don't try to control, and that was mom. She did not. She was like, you make your decisions and you live with them. But she was always willing to come whenever we needed her. When we had Joseph, it did not turn into a pleasant situation. And her, At that point in time, she had learned that she did not come for babies until they were born. When just, she, she came like two weeks before Justin was expected, and Justin was two weeks late, and she had to leave as soon as he was born. 
So she, and a couple of other incidents, I think she learned, no, I don't leave the house until that, until you're in labor or that baby's born. And Joseph called us, caused us some issues. And at the very last minute, Dave was able to call her up and say, you need to come now. And she was on the next plane. And as soon as she got there, the stress was gone, and I was able to deliver Joseph. And the strength that she showed us during our trials with our boys was amazing. And she was just always there for me when I needed help. And uh, my mom passed away in 2000. And so she was my mom, and I could go to her when I needed to. And I will always love her. Thank you. I'm uh, Michael Morris, uh, son-in-law. Um, I, uh, I, I, I I remember and appreciate uh, a lot the uh, the kindness that, that Vera always showed me, um, uh, welcoming me in, in, into the family, and uh, and I appreciated the time she made me laugh when she would complain about Don's midnight ice cream binges <laughs> and uh, other things. Uh, she. Uh, I think what I appreciate most, she'd always send, you all know this, if you were a, a child or a grandchild, she always sent a birthday card with a few dollars, and she would she would often write in there, thank you for taking care of Susan. And uh, so I hope I didn't disappoint her. I appreciate that, her saying that. <clears throat> and I'll always remember um, her last sweet words to me. We were... Um, Days were a little bit rough there at the end, and she couldn't move much. She was pretty weak, and so we would have to move her in, in the bed a little bit, and uh, which she didn't appreciate. <laughs> and she looked up at me, and she said, You're breaking my arm. <laughs> so I hope she's forgiven me by now. Um, but um, I, I'm, I'm thankful for uh, to be part of the, the family and... Uh, and for what uh, Vera did to raise Susan. Thanks. Well, I'm uh, Dave Hawkinson, another Dave in the family, and I'm the husband of Melody Hawkinson. Um, some amazing tributes today. I just want to say it's been very touching. But I'll always remember Vera because when I was dating Melody, um, we would remember our first trip down to Phoenix to visit them, and they were so incredibly um, supportive, kind, and welcoming for me to come into the family. And uh, I always appreciated that, and it, never, and it only grew from there. Over the course of time, their acceptance of me and my, per, my participation in the family and, and it was, was wonderful. It was, was really touching. Um, Many times you've heard over and over again about the pumpkin bread, but oh my gosh, that is the best pumpkin bread in the world. <laughs> it's kind of a problem because when Melody tries to make it, it's never quite there, <laughs> but I think she'll get it eventually, but it, it is the most amazing thing. Yeah. Um, and when we had our, our children over the course of time, um, Vera would come and help out. What a tremendous help that was for Melody and me. Because I was busy as an engineer working for the Air Force at the time and kind of a workaholic, as some of you might uh, remember. But um, it was so supportive and, and it really made a difference in Melody's life. And she was so caring in that regard. Um, and many times over the course of the years, just how she would be supportive of us, never judgmental, ever, and just be helpful to us and loving and caring. Uh, is I couldn't have asked for a better mother-in-law ever, so... With that said, um, I'll miss Vera. All right. Um, we'd like to invite uh, grandchildren to come and, and their spouses. No particular order. Just come on up and share a brief remembrance or a thought. I'm going to go first because my baby woke up and I don't know how long she's going to be happy. Um, I have a lot of good memories of Grandma and Granddad. Um, 
whenever they would come visit, Grandma would always bring sugar cereal, which Mom never bought for us, so I was always so excited. <laughs> and she also, of course, brought her pumpkin bread, her socket to me cake. Um, I knew whenever she visited, my torn stuffed animals and clothes would be mended. She always did that for us. And I have a lot of good memories of visiting them and you know, swimming in their pool and going to horse races and watching classic old movies and just a lot of, of great memories of them. Um, when I was pregnant with Lucy, who's now six months old, we were trying to decide on a middle name for her and we'd gone back and forth. And I remember distinctly I was making my bed and I just started thinking about grandma. And I just thought about the great example that she is, or was, is, how loving, um, thought about all the hard things that she'd, she'd been through in her life and how she just, just endured so well. And so we decided to give Lucy the middle name of Elizabeth after, you know, Vera Elizabeth. And um, I'm just, so thankful for her and, and for granddad and miss them. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Um, my name is Shannon Frankham, and I am the oldest daughter of Bonnie and David. <laughs> um, and I just was going to share a few memories as well um, about Grandma, Grandma Smith. And um, the I, I had a unique opportunity to go and live with her for a couple of years after I graduated from BYU, for four years actually. Um, and I graduated and, and moved to Arizona and was working and doing graduate school and all that. And so I lived with her for four years and um, was able to experience Grandma in a sort of new way. And um, when I first moved down there, and I, you know, joined the singles ward, and I actually, um, you know, was making friends, one of which is here today, Bree. <laughs> um, they were like, oh, you're Vera Smith's granddaughter. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> like I, she, there was this reputation that had preceded me of being just this kind of hardcore, strong woman in, in the ward and the stake. Um, and she was just kind of well-known in, in that area um, within the church. And um, Brie actually, probably a couple of weeks or months after I had moved there and we were becoming friends, um, she brought this card that grandma had given her back in the day when she was probably like 12, 13, 14 or something. Um, and it was a note that, that Grandma Vera had, had written to Brie, just kind of thanking her for a talk that she'd given on Sunday and, and kind of thanking her for some other, some other things. And I just thought that was so cool that my grandma, um, you know, was, knew one of my friends like back when they were like younger. And um, she was just kind of a staple in that, in that community for such a long time. Um, and, um, there was a couple stories, three little stories that I wanted to share, and then of course, everybody started talking and, and sharing more, th and more things started coming to my mind. But um, I have to share because um, Emily mentioned the cereal thing. Um, the room that I lived in at, at Grandma's house, which was the <laughs> guest room, <laughs> always floor to almost ceiling stacked with cereal boxes in the corners and in the closet. And I just, I just this is so bizarre. Grandma doesn't even eat this cereal like why do we have all of these cereal boxes and she would just collect them well buy them on sale throughout the year and store them in that room <laughs> that I lived in and was the guest room and then um, at uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas time she would take all of them and she would go, go give them to um, different local churches and food banks um, around the area and so I just think that that's such a, an example of what everybody's been talking about how giving and selfless she was I mean there's something that she did all year and just I mean, her house was full of cereal boxes and canned goods and things like that that she would go donate to different to different food banks all over the Phoenix area um, and uh, something that came to my mind um, just living in Arizona something that was I just thought was so unique and kind of interesting that I eventually kind of took on is on Sunday morning she'd get ready for church and she'd often um, paint her nails right before she'd got in the car 
because it was so hot, <laughs> they'd be dry <laughs> on the way, on the time that she got to, to church on Sunday. And so I remember years later, I would do that. I would like get in the car and then I would kind of like paint my nails, like as so they could dry on the way to wherever I was going. And I didn't realize till later where I had picked that up from was was grandma and her favorite color is lavender as you can kind of tell and we've kind of done a tribute and so um, I even did my nails with lavender today um, kind of in memory of her. Um, we talked a lot about her being a force of nature and her being just a very strong woman and um, when I was living there in Arizona I started dating my, um, my now husband and he would come over for dinner frequently you know couple times a month and um, I vividly remember her she she liked to make um, the frozen pizzas but put extra cheese on it and then make a big salad and she was always you know do you want some more here have some more always making sure that everybody was well fed and um, she had this big long uh, bread knife that she had been cutting things with probably her pumpkin bread for dessert mm -hmm. and um, she was just she took this big huge knife and waved it in my husband's face um, and she was like now if you live here hungry, it's your own dang fault. <laughs> she had plenty of food and was absolutely willing to continue sharing. Um, and uh, the final memory that I'll share with you is uh, what I, when I was there in Phoenix and in graduate school, got in a little car wreck and I totaled my car and I had to go buy a new one. And um, Grandma came along with me <laughs> to go to go pick out my um, my car, and um, I you know found the car, got it, did all that stuff, um, and it didn't have the floor mats. The floor mats were missing for some reason, and um, the sales guy um, he he was actually from Georgia, so he and Grandma kind of had this quick little bond, and they're the little southern accents, and they were just kind of like talking about Georgia. And um, anyway, the sales guy he assured me, oh yeah, yeah, for sure, I'll get I'll get those floor mats. Like when you come back later um, today to pick that up, we'll we'll have those floor mats for you. And um, later the day, I went and got the car, and no floor mats. And he was like, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I'll I'll get those. You know, come by whenever, a couple days, ordering them or something. Come get those floor mats. Um, didn't think anything of it. I was going to go by next week and get the floor mats. But um, later, um, later that day, I had a, a missed call and a voicemail on my phone, and it was from this car salesman from Georgia. And he left a message. He was like, hey, Shannon, um, I just want to let you know that um, your grandma came by the dealership <laughs> earlier today. Um, and to be honest, she was a little violent. Um, <laughs> But she just really want to make sure you get those floor mats. <laughs> and so uh, if you could just let her know that we are getting that taken care of. <laughs> and um, kind of just left this message. And um, I even remember playing that voicemail, I think, for my friends. We, we were at Krista's house or something. Um, and so they kind of uh, referred to her in a very loving way as Violent Vera, um, and because I had no, she didn't even tell me she was going down to this dealership to make sure that those car mats got um, taken care of, um, but I just thought it was so funny that he was just like, and you know, she was just kind of violent, you know, because she was going to get those floor mats taken care of, um, but again, just another story to kind of illustrate um, about, about Grandma and who she was and um, how she got stuff done and um, was so loving, so kind, so selfless. She truly is the most selfless person that, that I can think of. I mean, would give you anything or whatever, um, whatever you needed. Um, and I love her dearly and um, will miss her very much and um, I'm looking forward to seeing her again. I have to get up here quick or Michelle will take my story. Um, <laughs> um, I'm Heather Anderson. I am Grandma's favorite uh, grandchild, um, but also <laughs> Bonnie's youngest child and also favorite. Um, I didn't get to spend a lot of time with Grandma growing up. We were always on other sides of the country, but um, Michelle and I got to visit her a couple times um, during a long weekend, and um, we can... We can attest to the cereal boxes <laughs> in the room we stayed in. Um, those were very special times with Grandma and Granddad. Um, and I was just very grateful to get to know her a little bit better. And then I was watching the video. It's, she did do so much. And there, 
there truly isn't enough time, no matter how long we have to get to know someone. And um, I'm really thankful for all the stories that you guys have shared um, to help me get to know her a little bit better. But um, after our wonderful weekend with Grandma, I think we left with some of those boxes of cereal. <laughs> I think honey roasted peanuts, which also were stacked along the walls, all those hazelnut candies that you buy, and obviously the pumpkin bread, and a whole suitcase <laughs> full of citrus, um, oranges, grapefruit, tangerines, all that. Um, in fact, she gave us a new suitcase to take home with us, <laughs> full of that citrus, and we brought it to the airport, and I guess looked strange going through the, the x-ray machine, so the guy... TSA agent had to uh, open it to just check, and citrus was everywhere in the airport, <laughs> rolling <laughs> like, uh, thanks, Grandma. Uh, but that just that just attests to how selfless she really was. Um, last little story, I was able to visit her last September with my husband, and I was so grateful that he was able to to meet her. She was she was my last living grandparent, um, and. We went to Cracker Barrel. She, I, th I think she likes my husband, but she was very appalled that he had never been to Cracker Barrel before. <laughs> and she, she made that known. And she told, she told the story about how she's never had a bad meal at the Cracker Barrel, except for this one time it was bad, but then the rest of it, it's been great. <laughs> I'm sure we all know that story. Um, and then at the end, she, she brought out some pumpkin bread that she had bought for us. And I obviously loved it. It was a new treat for Caleb. He loved it. And since then, we had made a lot of batches, like for our friends and stuff. And every time I would make a new batch, um, it's thick and you're staring and it's kind of hard and trying to pour the bowl over and keep it steady. And I'm like, okay, you hold the bowl, I'll scoop it out. And it just made me think like how difficult that must have been for her near the end for arthritis and just being older and a little more fragile. Um, but it didn't matter. She was gonna have pumpkin bread for her grandchildren no matter what it cost her. And um, again, just another tribute to how selfish she was, and I love her very much, and I miss you, Grandma. I guess because Heather went before me, you know, <laughs> Michelle Reed, I am, I guess, the second favorite grandchild then, because <laughs> that one, the first has been taken, but it was always so fun to, to get to know Grandma, to get to see her little quirks and to learn that, like, oh, my, my uh, get stuff done attitude and, you know, get floor mats. I'm like, oh, that's from, that's from Vera. So, um, but it, she always was so kind and giving. And, and as I was thinking about, you know, memories from horse races to TSA and oranges going everywhere, I also thought about how many times I saw her when she was serving other people, when she was making sure that she'd written down to go visit so-and-so or call so-and-so or send a card out. She was never thinking of herself, and she was always wanting to be better and do more. And I can't remember who was that brought up, oh, Melody brought up the recycling, and that, that was true. One time when, when Heather, you, you brought this on yourself, one time when Heather and I were there, we were trying to help, you know, clean up anything that we could. She had some cement blocks that we moved, and we were trying to take a load of stuff to the dump, and sure enough, in her garage, a lot of recycling containers that we were trying to sneakily take with us, but Grandma caught Heather, <laughs> not me, because I, so I think that may have dropped you, so I may have been first favorite for a minute, as she was like, what are you doing with those containers? We're not taking them to, put those back, I gotta recycle those, so she was always taking care of, of everyone around her, and um, I was truly blessed to, to get to know such a, such a wonderful, wonderful lady and to have her be close the last, the last few weeks of her life. Um, I, the, the day before she passed away, I went, I went over there and she, not, not very responsive, but I just was talking with her and the, the one time that, that she, she moved in acknowledgement was when I was telling her how wonderful she was and to say hi to granddad and to Chris for me. And, and at that point, I knew that she, she was listening, that she heard. And just a testament to how much she loved everyone around her, especially her family. So I'll definitely miss 
miss her fiery spirit and and getting to to be with her but I'm very grateful to have known and and be a grandchild to such a wonderful lady um, I'm Kelly Connor I'm one of uh, Veer's granddaughters Apparently not one of the favorites, though. <laughs> um, and I'm Bonnie and Dave's daughter. Um, I just have really enjoyed these stories from, from everybody and um, talking about all of Grandma's great um, character traits and um, recognizing so many of them um, in my own mom um, and in my siblings and, and hopefully myself. Um, it makes a story that I have with my mom a lot make a lot more sense when my mom took me with her to buy a car. She was buying the car, but it was for my use. And at, and at one point, the salesman who needed to leave to catch a flight and her were haggling at this point over like $300. And I had to literally get up from his cubicle and leave because it was so uncomfortable because mom was going to get the additional $300 off. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and now and now I just know that like oh, okay so that's Vera. Vera got got the $300 off. Um uh, like I said a lot of the characteristics that I see um in in my mom and my siblings and myself and um I I always liked again apparently not the favorite. Good thought to that I had a little bit of of a special relationship with my grandma. We shared almost a birthplace, just Columbus and Fort Benning, and we have the same middle name, and um, I was the only one at the time for most of my life that was also born in July, um, and it made me feel closer to her and, and special, and um, as a lot of people have said, you know, I always thought of her as tenacious, and, you know, she knew what was right and what was wrong, and she would not, would not be moved for anything for that. Um, the pumpkin bread, obviously I have to talk about the hump pumpkin bread and everybody loves it and, and Heather makes it apparently. I have never made it by myself. I've always made it with grandma or my mom because I know if I make it by myself, it won't taste the same. Um, so at some point I'll make it and I know it won't taste the same, but um, we'll have to, we have to carry on the, the pumpkin bread recipe and... Um, and she always made us feel loved. She never forgot us on our Christmas and our birthdays. And I've been thinking the last couple weeks about my birthday coming up in a few months that it will be the first birthday that I don't have a card from her. Um, and, um, you know, from those stories, she never let anyone feel forgotten. Um, and that, to me, is one of her greatest traits. And um, I loved her very much. I'm Michael Morris Jr., um, obviously son of Michael, and then Susan, of course, uh, grandchild of Grandma Vera. Uh, others have already joked around about favorites and, and non-favorites of, of grandchildren, but I wouldn't be surprised if, in truth, each one of us felt that way, uh, as if we were the favorite, because of the individualized care and thought and devotion that our grandmother had for each one of us. Um, Uncle David and others have already mentioned that the cards that we would receive and the gifts at birthdays and, and Christmases and I can't think of a single year in my life when I didn't receive both or at least um, a birthday card and then a Christmas present from Grandma and I think it is just representative of her her care and her thought for her family, for her children, for her grandchildren. Um, I think, for me personally, her <clears throat> I remember when I was probably 12 years old, she had invited just me to come down to, to visit Grandma. Me? <laughs> I'll emphasize that. Uh, to come down to visit her and Granddad in uh, Phoenix. And... Uh, I spent probably a week there, and and she just cared 
so much about what was going on in my life, my little 12-year-old life, and and she just wanted to know uh, what I cared about and what I what I was doing, and that never ended. Uh, up until the last time I spoke with her, she uh, remembered what I was doing, where I was, who I was married to, what we were doing, uh, and she was so proud of, of everything that um, I had done, and she, I'm, I'm sure she was proud of everything that each one of us has done. Um, but that just uh, epitomized her life of care and devotion and thoughtfulness and love for everybody that she came in contact, not just her family. And um, not to, you know, overstate things, but I, I want you to know that her infamy as a pumpkin bread maker has now extended to the law firm where I work. Because I, <laughs> I, I made it once for uh, the sec my secretary. That makes me sound so fancy. I'm like not even licensed, but uh, for the secretary. And, um, and she, and I, I had made a whole loaf or two just for her for Christmas, and, and she spread it around to all the other secretaries. And twice last week, they, I was asked to make it again. <laughs> and so I'm sure it's not quite as good as, as grandma's, but it's, I guess it's close enough. Um, so in closing, um, I'll never forget what she meant to me um, on a personal level, but also all the little things that she did for everybody else. And uh, I will love and, and, and miss her. Hi, I'm uh, Sam Morris, um, son of Susan and Michael, and grandson of Grandma. Um, I'm very grateful for Grandma's influence in my life, and you know, her strong personality has always made it a pleasure to talk to her. And uh, she always made it, every time we would go down for Christmas. She always made it very special for all of us, and. And you know, just like Michael mentioned, every year getting a birthday card was always something I looked forward to. And Grandma always took time to talk to each one of us and spend time with each one of us. And I love her smile and, and the way she would look at me. And um, her attitude, her hardworking personality was is inspiring. Even if it meant she was putting away dishes at you know, five in the morning while we were trying to sleep, but <laughs> that's how she was. She was always go, 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 and um, it is inspiring to me. And after after uh, Granddad passed away, I I I, I took um, over care of you know his car, and um, every every time she would talk to me, she would check in about how I was how I was taking care of the car, and I was doing my best to take care of it to make her proud and make Granddad proud. And but she was she would check in about you know just life, how things were going. Um, back when I was in Scouts, she would talk to me. Her and Granddad would both talk to me a lot about how I was doing in Scouts, and uh, she was a very very caring, very. Um, influential person to me. I'm grateful for Grandma. And um, I love her very much. I miss her very much. And um, it's, I'm proud to have known her and have her in my life. So. It was kind of weird. I was watching the uh, the video that uh, was put together, and um, I had a couple thoughts. Um, the first was that, and I hadn't noticed this before, but I was looking at Granddad, and I could see Chris in his face, and um, it was weird <laughs> for a second. And, um, and then looking at Mom, I could see Emily, and. Uh, just the, how close we all really are, I guess is kind of coming full circle with grandma passing and uh, you know, how each generation really is. We, we're, we're of the same spirit. And, uh, and the second thought I had was 
the whole time I've known Grandma, she was always uh, the same person. And I think, at least in my experience, people don't really become who they're going to be until they've faced certain things and they've learned the lessons. And just from everything I've heard from everyone, I think Grandma learned that very early on. She was always the same person. Um, and I think that that's unique. Um, and I see that in mom as well, where there's, there's this constant, um, this constant state of maturity and just assurance. They, they know who they are and grandma knew who she was from what everyone's saying from the time that you were born to the time I knew her. And so that's just resonating with me. Um, how strong of a person she was, and the losses she suffered that she never talked about, um, only if we asked. And so that was interesting to just, like everyone talks about her spirit of service, she she really was looking for ways to always put everyone else first, even at the, uh, even at her own expense if she was dealing with things. And so I'm just very grateful for her and all that she taught me, and I will. Uh, miss her dearly. Okay, typically I would not do this because I am not a direct grandchild, but um, <laughs> the person... <sighs> okay, so... <clears throat> the, I have to say just a thing because um, I was Christopher's wife and he, he so anyway <laughs> but um, first of all she was a very very important to him <laughs> um, so I got to know her quite well um, and the thing that immediately made an impression on me because I'll just start with me because I can talk about that uh, was how, in what high regard she held her children um, and how well she knew her children, right? Because um, some, of, some of you, like, of course, I was in contact with you quite a bit, um, but some of you I didn't really ever meet. I, I did get to meet Bonnie, but never her husband, David, um, hopefully today. Uh, and yet I felt like I knew so much about you and who you are and um and just all these stories about Bonnie and just like how um like amazingly assertive she was um <laughs> that was like often where the stories went but also I was uh, very familiar with um your trip to Hawaii I've heard about that and actually heard about it again um when I saw her a couple weeks before she died and then um with Susan I just had I mean this incredible, I mean, ugh, anyone who spent time with her knows the incredible conversationalist that she was, right? And um, her conversations with me were no exception to that. I mean, she got, and she was so direct, too. It was just like such a different way than my friends and I talked to each other where we're like, let's see like how intense we can be like with this or something. She was just like, here's how life is, you know, like, and you'll discover that if you haven't already. Um, and here's some, some unsolicited advice uh, that, you know, you're going to take the right way. And uh, she was, like, very wise, you know, and just, like, here's how it is and here's how I feel about people. And, yeah, um, so anyway, she was talking about Susan and that way that she spoke of all her children, which is why I feel like I know you so well. Um, and she told me, Chris had gone to bed, she told me some things that just that Susan had been through, that um, I am a hundred percent because Susan is like the classiest woman that I know. Like I say that with well, next to my mom, you've met her; she's so dignified. Uh, but <laughs> like you two women are the classiest women I know. Like when I have to just be a little better, I'm like, okay, channel them today. Like keep it together. Um, and she just told me some things that I was like, I am 100% sure that Susan never told Chris this because it would have been 
inappropriate for him to know. Like, and a lot of mothers, when they get divorced, go ahead and just let that, all the, you know, nasty stuff hang out there. I'm sorry, it's true, and I don't think it's a great idea, and I'm just going to say that. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, Susan never did that. He didn't have any clue. And I was like, a an adult woman, I can handle it, right? But I was shocked, <laughs> like completely shocked, because you would never know. You would never, ever know she went through it. She is the kindest person in the world to that person that did those things. What an incre incredible example, because that's exactly how you should be, because life is hard, and we can't judge people, right? Um, especially people we don't know, which I didn't really feel like I knew Christopher's father very well, despite them being very good friends um, at the end. Like, but what struck me was just like, I don't think she wants him to know. And I was like, and I, as his wife, am going to tell him every single thing. Like, and so immediately when he woke up, I was like, I have to tell, and this is also who I am. I'm like, I have to tell you some things. And I'm like, and they're not going to be easy to hear, and I'm, you have to hear them. So I was just like, you know, um, this may surprise you, but I tell him the things. And he was like, okay, um, that's a lot, you know, doesn't surprise me. Like, I figured things out, like, over time, like, who people are and, and sort of what I think they're capable of and how to love them despite that. Um, and he just, what struck him was just like how classy Susan was. Like, it was just like such a, like, just how amazing. It just, he loved Susan so, so much. Like, you could feel it. Like, they'd, like, cuddle and stuff, which is not what we do in our family, uh, my immediate family. Um, so it struck me, but just, like, the love that was there was palpable, and I saw it go, like, up. Like, just, I guess, the respect, right? And it was because of this amazing conversation that I had with your mother and grandmother that that happened. And, I mean, he had, like, tears in his eyes and just grateful, I guess, that he didn't have to know until he was ready. Um, and what a gift. And so that was just, like, one thing, and I, like, hate to even get into that because, you know, it's not my business. But it was just cool. Um, and to get to know you guys all better because of her. And she also gave me some very good advice about young widowhood, too, because she went through that. And I kind of didn't know if she was going to talk to me about it or not. And she did, very directly. Like, this is what you got to do. Like, you know, I know it's hard, and you love them, and that doesn't go away kind of thing. Like, you're going to carry this with you for the rest of your life. Be prepared kind of, but also move on, move forward, basically, with your life, um, which is a really hard thing to hear. <laughs> and um, when you don't, honestly, I'm so dramatic sometimes, I was like, oh, it's literally not possible. But when she said it, I believed her, because she did it, right? And that was a really cool thing for me with her. So um, for Chris with her, um, so I know you were all, his, like, her favorite grandchildren. Like, 100% believe it, right? But she did tell me, she was like, Chris is also my favorite. I know I do say this to others. Uh, she's like, but he was a little bit extra special because um, he needed our help more. He needed our help more. And she's like, and that made me love him in a special way. You know? Um, and, he, and, you know, he did. He really did. You guys know that better than me. He needed a little more. And I tried to give him that, and I know he got it from his family, and I know he got it from his grandparents. Because other than Susan, there's nobody he loved more in the world than Vera and Don. Um, my gosh, my mouth is so dry. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, like, you could just even seeing her at the end, like that, I think it was about two weeks before she died, um, I just, I just see and feel him so much in her, like, and it was like, I'm like, I don't know if it's because she's touching the other side, or like, and so maybe she's a little closer, or like, what it is, it's something more than that, but like, I was just like, I'm just going to hang on to you for dear life. I seriously am smothering this woman, right? And she's into it. Like, we're just, like, hugging, and I'm like, I can't let go of her because, like, also, besides just being her, she's also him. 
you know what I mean? I think James kind of touched on that, right? Like, I was just like, nope. So that was really, that was really wonderful to see. That's the kind of influence that she had on people that she served, right? Like you had talked about. And I just had that thought. I'm like, well, she served him so much, right? And like so much. And you know what, you guys, like, he died in a way that was frankly very shocking to a lot of people. And and I'll just say as someone who knew him better than anyone, um, not reflective of the trajectory of his life at that time and not reflective of the person that he generally was. Okay? But um, I felt like I got, even from well-intentioned people, um, I'm just going to be honest because she was honest about things, um, a lot of judgment surrounding that, and I kind of understand it. Because if I didn't know him so well, I would be like, oh, he did what? You know, and like, why? And like, that kind of thing. Never once did she bring it up to me. Never once did she talk about him in any sort of way, except for that, like, he was 100%, like, as far as she was concerned, like, on the right track, which is how I felt about him. I'm like, you know, if you're going to die, die on in the right general direction. And she felt that way about him, too. And I never got any weird, not even a moment of judgment from her, ever, because that's not the person that she was. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciated that, like, especially from someone that knew him, I think, as well as I did, um, and as well as Susan did. Um, and to see another thing she and I talked about was just uh, how much Dawn uh, had invested in Chris, and not only did they look like so alike, and they walked alike, and like they would move like like it was very strange. Um, <clears throat> and yes, they did physically resemble each other, which is how I know he would have died with all his hair. Um, <clears throat> so I looked forward to that. But yeah, uh, was that in the absence of his father being able to be the father that he needed, Don was that father. Like that's why they were like that. Like so, he grew up to be. A good, I, I was going to try to do a percentage, um, I'm not, but instead of a reflection of his father, he got to grow up to be Don because of the people that your mother were and that Don was. And um, I just wanted to say that, uh, just one last thing, because this just is an illustration of exactly how important she was. Um, as I was driving Chris to the camping trip that he died on, um, <clears throat> dropping him off, uh, he was on the phone with Vera because it was her birthday, because he also didn't fall far from the tree in that respect. He remembered everyone, I'm really bad at that, everyone's birthday. He, uh, you were going to get a call, but you know what? Even if he was on his way to, what well, he was on his way to, um, he was going to call his grandma and talk to her for the entire hour it took to get there about like his life and her life and this and that and our visit that was upcoming and like all the, all the things, right? And just, it was just... I'm just so glad. <laughs> I'm, I'm just so glad that she got to, you know, also hear um, c how much he loved her um, right before. So anyway, uh, Chris loved her very, very much. And um, he and they did just an incredible, incredible thing for him, which was also a gift to me because he helped me in a lot of ways. So thank you for also letting me say something. I'm uh, Tommy, that's usually what they call me, the youngest grandchild, I think, um, there's a lot, <laughs> but um, I was going to, I was reflecting on what a lot of you have said, and the main thing was that she put others before herself, and it kind of hit me, Sam brought up one of the stories, we spent Christmas, um, I think three times in the last seven or eight years, and you know, about 4 a.m., she'd, she'd get up and start putting silverware away, away, you know. She'd turn on the lights, we're in the next room, it did, didn't matter. Um, and it kind of just hit me just barely um, how and, and how she accomplished, you know, putting others before herself. Um, the mornings, mornings are the worst for me. <laughs> and so just seeing, seeing the example of, you know, grandma and, and, you know, my mom and my dad, 
having having a sense of of mind over matter almost where I, where it doesn't matter how early it is or how late it is um the amount of self control or like um self character that you have can can really make a difference and i see that in in all of you i see that in, in my parents and my brothers and um i'm just grateful that she she was an example another example i i, I look up to my brothers a lot i look up to my to my my dad and my mom a lot and i realize where where they get it where the way they get all those those traits and I just I'm grateful for that. So Okay, my name's uh Adam Smith, uh David and Carol's son, uh second oldest grandchild. Uh, things I remember is going to visit them in Arizona when we were kids. We tried to uh, just put up with us with all the bickering and stuff and from listening to what everybody's going and seeing how everything's, everybody's grown up throughout the time. She, we kept her busy <laughs> with all of our activities and family events and everything that we've gone through and trials and tribulations, and she was always there to try to be there with us the best that she could. And that's pretty much it. I'm not a really big public speaker, so that's all I can say, just represent my uh, family and Justin and Liz, because they can't be here because of their family, so thank you. also have some uh, uh, niece and some nephews. I know we'll probably like to take a minute. Um, I'm going to read a little something that um, my cousin Robert's um, wife, who can't be here today, wrote to me. Um, said, um, Vera was such an amazing woman and such an inspiration to me. She was at mine and Robert's wedding, so from the very first day of my being a part of this family, she was there. It was a bittersweet day for me because my mother and father were not there. Vera was so sweet to me that day and helped me I will never forget. I remember her many visits to Georgia to see family, and she always made time to make sure we got to spend time with her. Uh, thank you for sharing her with me over the last few months while she was at your house. Okay, just real brief. Um, back in 2017, uh, Susan Greer and I went down to visit Vera. Oh, I'm Rosalind Starling. <laughs> I'm her niece. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> Big, bold print. Goodness <laughs> gracious. Um, but anyway, Susan sent me a little something because she's not able to be here either. She just wanted to say, as a young girl, I can remember seeing Vera sitting on a pew of the chapel in the Howard Avenue building back in Columbus, Georgia, when she would visit her family. Although I was young, I had a love for her because her mother, because her, Susan's mother, had a love for her. They were good friends. Uh, I was blessed to be able to spend a week with her in her home in 2017. She is filled with love, wisdom, and fun. We played games together, shared stories of my mother, grandmother, and others. I will always treasure that time with her. She lived her life as a woman of faith and led by example through love, service, and righteousness. And that was from Susan Greer. She's in Georgia, unable to be here today. Uh, real quick, my little thoughts of Aunt Vera. Um, well, Aunt Vera and Uncle Don always went on trips with Mom and Dad, Ruby and Austin Starling. And to me, then, she was just Mom's sister, Aunt Vera, you know. Uh, and then mom passed away in 2014 and Aunt Vera would always call and check on me and 
see how I was doing. And we would talk about soap operas because we watched the same one. <laughs> yes, I used to be a big soap opera fan, but I've kind of veered away from that now. Um, so when I moved to Utah in December of 2017, January 1st of 2018, I was able to start going down to see Aunt Vera more often down in Phoenix. And those were some cherished, wonderful times. Um, even though she hadn't played cards in many moons, she still would beat me in manipulation all the time. <laughs> I don't remember how. Yes, she do. <laughs> She'd still beat us. Uh, we'd talk about soap operas and things like that. And then this, la this past February, my brother Gary and I went down to see her for my birthday weekend. Uh, it was a very wonderful experience. She was vibrant as usual. She was always doing something for others. Um, we went and had Mexican and I, she said, I have to go to the grocery store. I said, are you, okay, let's go. So we went to the grocery store and I said, you want me to come in with you? Oh no, I've got it. Just drop me off at the door. So I dropped her off at the door and she'll go in, she'd get on the little cart and off she goes. And then she'd come on back, she'd bring the cart right on out to the car and then get back in and she was fine. But uh, just, just some times with her, you know, I didn't particularly care for pumpkin bread. <laughs> I know it's a shock, right? I think uh, my favorite was the corn pudding. The corn pudding is a simple recipe I can even make. Yay! And it tastes good. But uh, I get to where I'm taking it to several family functions now. And that's one of the things that I take to my family functions. And this is Aunt Vera's recipe. Oh, who's Aunt Vera? <laughs> yeah, so. And then we'd get into a discussion. But um, she will be missed. And we will see her again. So, thank you. I'm younger than my dad, so I can beat him up here. <laughs> uh, my name is Tara Starling, and Vera was my great aunt, but I didn't know that until I was a teenager. I always thought she was just another one of my aunts because she was such a constant presence in our lives. And I remember I was probably 12 or 13, and I'm like, wait, Gary, Dennis, Rosalind, those are my dad's siblings. So who's Aunt Vera? Who's Aunt? <laughs> and that's when he finally explained that she was my great aunt, but we also always got the birthday cards handwritten uh, with a few dollars in it and the constant visits. I think growing up, it doesn't seem like there was a year that Aunt Vera didn't come and visit, but for some reason, we always got banana bread. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but um, always there'd be a couple of loaves and banana bread in her suitcase wrapped in tin foil. One loaf to have while she was there, and then a loaf or two to, to put in the freezer, and we'd just make it last as long as possible. And I don't even like bananas. They're so gross. <laughs> but they just like... <laughs> but, uh, but I love banana bread because it always tastes like, like love and like feeling special. And, and if anything, you know, Aunt Vera made us always feel like we mattered and we were special and that we were like first-string nieces <laughs> and nephews. <laughs> And um, one of my favorite memories of Vera is probably something that never actually ended up happening. But um, it was probably, I don't know, Roslyn can, can correct me on the timeline, but probably a year or so ago. And my mama, Sharon, who loves Vera with her whole heart and can't be here today. So I'm standing here and like to testify my mama's love for her too. But it was a year or so ago and my mom was like, just laughing and she's like, well... Aunt Vera wants us to come down and do this girls trip thing and they've got this Jeep excursion in Arizona where you get on these jacked up pink Jeeps and you go like riding through the rocks and everything. <laughs> like those Jeeps would just jiggle her bones apart. Like she's just like this the tiniest, frailest thing, but the most powerful woman, I think. And and so it never actually happened because of the time, but just the fact that Aunt Vera wanted to get in these big pink jacked up Jeeps and go rolling around, like Vera had and will always have an indomitable spirit, an indomitable spirit of love, an indomitable spirit of service, and an indomitable spirit of faith. And I hope that as her great niece, that I'm able to, to live as, as a testament of some small 
part of that. So Vera, wherever you are, I'm going to paint one corner of my Jeep pink just for you. And at some point in the eternities, we'll go on that ride together. Finally. <laughs> I thought I had it made, but then Rosalind got jumped up and Tara and everything. Anyway, I'm Robert Starling. I'm the eldest son of Vera's older sister, Ruby. And since I was the firstborn, there was a little bit of time I was the favorite nephew. You know? <laughs> For a while, anyway. But uh, I just want to thank my Aunt Vera on today for bringing us all together. We need to get together more often. Because I've got an amazing family. All my wonderful cousins, cousins-in-law. And my first cousins once removed. But you know, she's not here. A few years ago, my wife and I went to Israel. And I guess if General Haight can cry, I can too. I always said it was a part of the Owens genetic uh, defect that the tear glands were always too close to the heart so that when your heart swells, it kind of leaks out. But that's okay. That's okay. A few, a few years ago, my wife and I went to Israel and we stood at the empty tomb where our Savior laid for just three days. And there's a sign on there. It says, He is not here, for He is risen. Now, because He is risen, I know with all my heart that we will rise as well. And that we will see here once again. And that's a glorious good news for everyone. I'm a writer, and so whenever I feel something strongly, I usually sit down and write about it. And it was either the day or the day after Vera passed that I sat down and wrote a little something. It's not very long, but I'm happy to be able to share it with you today. It says, this will be a mini, a mini eulogy for a mighty woman. They say that great things often come in small packages. My Aunt Vera was not large of stature, but she had a giant heart. I think if you would look up the word spunky in the dictionary <laughs> or in Wiki Wikipedia, you'll find a picture of my Aunt Vera. In my mind, she's the personification of someone who met life head on, who lived it on her own terms and didn't take guff off of anybody. I had several aunts by marriage, but Vera was the only aunt by blood or by birth. Unfortunately for me, for most of my life, she and her family lived in different cities somewhere across the country. I never got to spend as much time with her or with my cousins as I'd like. But either I was her favorite nephew or more likely she had an amazing friends and family database because never a birthday or even an anniversary, would pass without a sweet card or letter from her, often accompanied by a $20 bill. And I say, I've never missed an anniversary. Because if I should happen to forget it, I got a card from Vera <laughs> that would remind me. And her letters were legendary. 
in her own sweet way, she rambled on about anything that had happened to her in the last few days. I wish I'd saved more of those. My Aunt Vera was well read and would always have stimulating conversations on many topics. And she was always there for any important family occasion. She set a great example for us all, socially, intellectually, and most of all, spiritually. Vera was a dynamo, spending her life energetically and unselfishly selfishly in the service of God and her fellow beings. Even as, she the near to, as, even as she neared the end of her mortal journey, she wanted to do it on her own terms. When I visited her in Phoenix last December, she said she would finished everything she wanted to do on earth and was eager to go beyond the veil to begin the next part of her eternal adventure. Her last request for me was that I pray for her that she could be released from the bonds of earth. I'm happy for her now that her loving Heavenly Father has granted her request and the righteous desires of her heart. So on this day, I do not mourn for my Aunt Vera. I say bon voyage. Like a passenger on a luxurious cruise ship departing for new lands over the horizon or an astronaut leaving Earth on a roaring tower of flame, I just say, you go, girl. <laughs> I look forward to a happy reunion where we'll have many stories to share. And I hope that it's not another passing before we can all come together again. You are an amazing family. I'm grateful to be a part of it. We have all inherited from my mother and from Vera, from Charles, from our great grandmother, Marie, who was also an amazing woman. We have inherited a lot. And I pray that we will honor that heritage and carry the torch forward in our lives on earth so that when the roll is called up yonder, and when the family circle meets, there's an old gospel song that says, let the circle be unbroken. And I pray it will be unbroken that we can all be there and meet again, if not here in mortality. And this is my prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a once in a lifetime thing, so if there is anyone else, we're going, you know, we're going a little longer than we thought, but we are okay. We'd love to have. If you want to say anything, I don't want to have anyone not take a night, not take a turn. So, hop up, hop up now. <laughs> we're good. They'll wait for us. Um, I'm, I'm Dorothy Chipman. I'm Dee's wife. We're not really nieces and nephews of Vera, but she made us feel that way. Dee's mom is the one that introduced her to the to the gospel, and they were just really super close all through the years. And every time that um, Vera would come into town, she would always make it a point to come and say hi to us, and she made us feel so much a part of the family that. I mean, I didn't realize for years that she really wasn't a true Aunt Vera, but <laughs> she was to me. She was to me, and I just, I just absolutely love her. And and I never got to taste some pumpkin bread, but I'd love to have a recipe. So. <laughs> but anyway, I just want you to know how much I truly love her and appreciate 
the love that she gave me and my husband. So, thank you. And I'm Dee Chipman, and even though she wasn't my biological aunt, she was always my aunt. And she was one of my biological aunt and uncle's close friends, my uncle, my uncle Lynn and my Aunt Joyce. And every time she'd come to town, we were always on the, on the list for her and Don to come, come visit. I can remember being a little boy, and I was welcomed in your, felt loved and welcomed in your grandma's home in Columbus. And every time I was in your mom and your grandma's home, I always felt loved. In fact, the, uh, the week I came home off my mission from Korea, we spent Christmas with with her and Don and she was family. She loved us and I'm gonna be an outlayer here because even though it was a recipe that was published for the whole world to see on the side of a carton, it wasn't her bread that I loved, it was her banana pudding and even though anybody could see it and make it, hers always tasted different. It was always great. That was the one that I always looked forward to. But I was so, so thankful for Susan to invite us down and make sure we knew that we got to spend a, a last conversation with her because I loved her. Her letters were always about everything and anything whether it was her letters or her emails. But when her and Don would come to our home, their questions were always about our kids and how they were doing. And their statements were always about the church and how you all were doing. That was what they loved to talk about in person, was you, their children, their grandchildren. And I thank you for the privilege of being able to be with you today. Thanks. Yes, I was just going to say, is there any? Is there anyone else? Yeah, don't be shy. I'll be, <clears throat> I'll be ninety years old in December. I probably have known Vera longer than anybody else who is here in this room. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Lynn Kimball. I married Joyce Carlston, who is the youngest sister of Naoma Carlston, who was a missionary in Georgia. Um, we never were able to visit Don and Vera in, on the East Coast, but we did as often as we could visit them in Las Vegas and then again in Phoenix. And Vera was a lovely, wonderful, courageous lady. And we enjoyed those visits with Don and Vera. We never left their home without a few oranges, <laughs> grapefruit, and a few other things. Uh, Vera always treated us and always treated everybody else with typical Southern hospitality and kindness. Thank you for inviting us. Told Susan and money, I'll cry the whole time, so you just have to deal with it. Um, because I'm just like her. I'm blunt to the point, we're both from the South. Um, my name is Jeannie Paulson. I've known Miss Vera for, gosh, almost 30 years now. Um, she threw me two baby showers and put me in my place when I needed it, <laughs> which was a lot. Um, but her service a lot in Deer Valley Ward was me. She was assigned to us because we were inactive. 
and they knew she would come see me. And that she did, and she sent the missionaries to McDonald's after me, and everything. And sometimes I would get a knock on the door, Jeannie, I know you're in there, open the door. <laughs> and I would open the door, because I knew I would get it next time I saw her if I didn't. But there used to be a saying in the church to give them a friend and give them a calling. So she told the bishop, she was my friend now, and she needed to give me a calling, and I was going to be on the activities committee, and that was it. And he said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and so she told my husband she was going to put him to work. We built palm trees. We built, oh, my goodness, he built everything. She said it, and he built it. And... My mom passed away about eight years ago, and she had Alzheimer's. And there was one day that she decided that she was going to go home. Well, she her home was in South Carolina. So she took off from Miss Vera's house, which was right down the street. Because we moved back here and or to Deer Valley, and... It was a sign. We turned down the street to go see her, and there was a house for rent right there. So we knew that was where I needed to be so I could be close to her. But those grandchildren out there, y'all were her favorite. I was. <laughs> Just saying. The kids can testify. I'm an adopted grand or daughter. So, but I loved your grandmother with all my heart. Well, I don't know how to thank you all um, for just all your beautiful comments, and we will we will close um, with um, with a hymn, and then David Haight will give our benediction. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, we are indeed thankful for the opportunity that we had to meet here today to celebrate the life of your choice daughter. We're thankful for the, the fellowship and the spirit that we felt here and to hear the tributes that testify of her legacy on her mission here. We ask you to please bless us that we might be able to retain these, these memories and thoughts and that we might be able to follow her example and follow the example of the Savior. Bless us that we might be able to return to our, our homes and places and safety and and always have thy spirit to be with us. And we say these things humbly in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Kind Heavenly, gracious Heavenly Father, by the power of the Holy Melchizedek Priesthood, which I hold, I dedicate and consecrate this grave for Vera Elizabeth Smith, and bless it that it will remain hallowed and sacred until the resurrection of the morning of the first resurrection. 
We pray to thee, Father, that thou will bless this family and all those who need your heart, that her spirit might reside with us, that we may carry on her tradition as we lay this, our matriarch, to, to rest. We are grateful that thou hast allowed us to be part of thy choice daughter's life and that she was the great example to us all. And we look forward to seeing her again when we are all resurrected and stand before you. We ask that her spirit of kindness and joy in other's life and the values that she taught would live through us, our children and our children's children. We say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>